welcome back to the island of Sao Miguel. We have nearly five days left on this island before heading back to Canada. The weather is looking quite rainy and cold for the majority of this week, but we'll see what we end up getting up to anyway. We were welcomed back to the island with a nice sunny day, so we decided to make a stop at a viewpoint. We tried visiting before, earlier on in our trip, but due to the high elevation, it was quite clouded over. So we were definitely happy to finally get a relatively nice day and get a good view of it. After being so busy this past week, we were just exhausted and decided to go straight to bed after. That's freezing. I decided to go for a swim first thing in the morning to help wake myself up. I have no idea what the actual temperature was, but the pool was unheated, so it was pretty cold. Luckily, there was also a hot tub to warm myself back up again. And then it was time for a quick breakfast and espresso before heading out for the day. Today I'm going on a 5 km trail that takes me to a lagoon to go swimming in. There are tons of waterfalls all along the trail which keeps it really interesting and full of really pretty scenery. And after walking not much further, we finally arrived at the lagoon. couple from Lisbon there and one of them ended up coming swimming with me. I expected the water to be a much brighter blue and more clear but maybe that's just the case during the summer when the water level is lower or even just on a sunnier day. The water was also very cold. We came across this sign showing that we're about 4,550 kilometers away from home. We then continued on and kept exploring some more waterfalls on our hike. Oh, 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 
Then we came across a section where we had to cross a stream to continue on our trail. Since it was winter, the water was flowing pretty strong, so it was a bit of a challenge to cross with all of our gear. As of right now, we're not entirely sure what we're doing today. I'm just gonna pack up the car and then our plan is to start driving and see what we come across. We stopped at a cemetery to pay our respects to the father of a close family friend. Then we ended up checking out this beach, which we determined was our new favorite beach on the island for sure. It's a one kilometer stretch of soft black sand and big crashing waves. Then the weather started to turn on us. It got really windy and dark, and then our power went out. But the host did provide us with some instructions on how to try to get it back on. Today is our final full day of our trip and we're definitely not getting lucky with the weather. The past few days have been very windy and rainy and I think today is the worst day so far. But the weather changes so fast here. I don't think I've ever experienced this heavy winds before. So I think I'm gonna head back a bit more to the east coast, which is closer to where we're staying, and hopefully escape a little bit of the winds. And I think we're a bit higher elevation right now as well, which is also contributing to uh, how windy it is right now and foggy. So I think we'll head back over, hopefully get a bit more sun for our last day and uh, a bit less wind. Due to the weather, we searched for things to do on a rainy day on the island, which led to us coming across a pineapple plantation. 
The island is home to over 6,000 pineapple plantations, with just a few of them being open to the public. The pineapples grown here are completely organic and grown in greenhouses made from wood and whitewashed glass. The pineapple plant only produces one pineapple every two to three years. The wind definitely didn't let up the rest of the day, but at least we got to see a little bit of sun. We spent a lot of time exploring the different beaches and just taking in the scenery. I find it extremely therapeutic to just spend time watching and listening to the waves crashing. This morning, I'm spending some time drinking my tea and watching the sunrise and trying to savor the last few moments of the trip. Today is the day that we fly back to Canada. I'm definitely going to miss waking up to such a beautiful view of the sunrise every morning and listening to the birds chirping. But I'm also definitely looking forward to getting back home again and getting into a regular routine. I'm not exactly sure what our plan is for our final day, but right now we're just packing up all of our stuff and going to check out. And then hopefully the weather is not too bad today and we'll go back into town, maybe grab a coffee and kind of just sit and relax. Um, the sunrise was beautiful this morning, but now there's some really dark clouds coming in. So it's looking like it's going to be another rainy and windy day, which is unfortunate because uh, the majority of the weather this past week since we've been back here has been rainy and windy, but we've definitely made the most of it regardless. All right, well, I'm going to try to get packed up quickly so I can enjoy my final day on this island. We spent the rest of the morning exploring a botanical garden before heading off to the airport.
It's finally time to head back to Canada, but I wanted to share some more highlights from the trip. I definitely can't forget about the cows everywhere, which produced the most amazing grass-fed milk. Or the incredible food that we ate. Specifically the seafood, which we definitely took advantage of eating while we were here. One of my personal favorites was the octopus, but you also couldn't go wrong with any of the other amazing options. We also spent some time checking out the hot springs. We also visited a cool place called the Gin Library. So that makes us Europe's largest gin collection and a world's second largest. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time back in Canada.